Yes, welcome to today's session. My name is Steven Muchere, and today we are going to be looking at advanced tax, particularly on value added tax. Value added tax is one of the sections under the syllabus of Paper 9, Advanced Tax Session, and it is one of the areas students can collect marks. For that matter, I want to encourage you today uh, to, uh, to look at, let's begin by looking at these key terms, which usually mislead several students. You need to understand what VAT is. VAT is an indirect tax. It's not a direct tax. What does that imply? It is imposed on goods or services. Input tax. When someone says input tax in connection to VAT, what is the person referring to? Input tax is the amount that can be credited from the supply of goods or services. Output tax, this is the amount which is charged or payable to the tax authorities. So the output tax in this case, it is the amount which you are charging on your taxable supply. Let me also introduce you to the tax rate. Tax rate, and I want to quote it in this format, R over 1 plus, I mean 100 plus R. R over 100 plus R. So when you have a taxable supply and it is inclusive of VAT, for you to obtain the VAT component, then the rate applicable is R out of 100 plus R. Assuming you have made sales of 100 shillings, then the VAT in this 100 shillings will be 18% over 100 plus 18 times 100. Let's see what we get there. Uh, 18 over 118 times 100. Right, right. 1.18 times 100, 15. So you have your VAT 15.2 at 15.2. Now, what will be the amount exclusive of VAT? The amount exclusive of VAT will therefore be 100 minus 15 which gives, let's see, 100 minus 15, ah, 85. So in this case, this amount is exclusive of VAT. This amount is inclusive of VAT. Well, who is the taxable person? The taxable person is the person who is registered under the VAT regulations, the VAT law, uh, to make taxable supplies to, to entities, to other persons. And taxable supply is a supply of goods or services. It can also be a, an import of goods or services. You have heard me talk about the taxable person must be registered under the requirements of the VAT law. So we go to registration of a taxable person. Section 7 of the VAT Act provides for registration of, of persons. There are, I'm going to list for you the clauses of registration. First, if a taxable person makes taxable supplies for a period of three calendar months, the total of which is equivalent to one quarter of the annual registration threshold 
exclusive of any tax, then the person will be liable to register for tax for VAT in particular. What is the annual registration threshold? The annual registration threshold at the moment is governed by section 7, subsection 2 of the VAT Act, which is 150 million. Now, if 150 million is the annual registration threshold, then one quarter of 150 will be one out of four times 150 and we punch into our calculators 150 divided by 4 that is 37.5 million so if a tax person has made taxable surplus for a period of three calendar months the total of which exclusive of any tax exceeds this i mean the quote of the annual registration principle then it is implied the duty for that person to register for the VAT has risen. Question is, when do you apply for registration? Because we are saying that you have to apply for registration when you hit the registration threshold. Now, this is the period. The person is supposed to register within 20 days following the end of the tax period in which the registration threshold was hit. The quarter of the registration threshold was hit. So, by the 20th day of the following month, that person must have applied for registration. And then, when is the effective date of registration? After applying for registration, within the 20 days following the end of the three calendar period, that is the three calendar months. The effective date of registration is the first day of the following period. Under the VAT law, whenever we talk about period, tax period, tax period we are referring to one month. One to a month. A month. Tax period is a month. So this VAT is paid every month. Let me give you an example. We have July, August, and September. So, if this taxpayer has made taxable supplies in these three months, and the total of taxable supplies, exclusive of any tax, is 38 million. 38 million in these three months. Then, the person is supposed to apply for registration between 1st October and 20th October. Between 1st October and 20th October. Now, after applying for registration, and the person is registered, issued with a certificate of registration from the Commissioner General, the effective date of registration will now be 1st. November. First November. Now, what about other alternatives? Here we are talking about the past. You have made taxable supplies in a three calendar month period. Also, if the taxpayer has reasonable grounds to expect that in the subsequent three calendar months we make taxable supplies exclusive value of which exclusive of any tax will exceed the annual registration principle then that person also qualifies to apply for registration thirdly if any taxpayer or any person expects to make taxable supplies for a period of more than three calendar months, value of which exclusive of any tax exceeds the annual registration threshold. What am I saying here? What I'm saying is this. In a case 
you are expecting. This time round, you have not. It is not about the past. It's about the future. Here we are in the future of October. This happened in the past, so you you evaluate. For the future, we are saying you are now in October. As of today, we are in October. You make your estimates and you expect that between no, November and January 2021, you are likely to make tax sales supplies, value of which exclusive of any tax will exceed 30 what? 7.5 million. Then you are therefore supposed to apply for registration at the beginning of this period where you are making the estimate. Here you are applying at the end of this period within 20 days. At the end of this period you apply within 20 days. If you are expecting in the three calendar months coming you apply at the beginning of the period. If you are expecting in a period more than three calendar months, maybe four or five or six, you are likely, you have reasonable grounds to expect that you are likely to make taxable supplies, value of which exclusive of any tax will exceed the annual registration threshold. Then still you are supposed to apply for registration at the beginning of that period you are expecting. So, moving away from that, we need to know what happens in case you do not apply for registration when actually you are supposed to be registered? The Commissioner General of URI, I mean URI will register you for secret. And the, any tax, outstanding tax will be paid with the interest they are on. Having talked about penalties, or penalties for uh, for tax for v under the VAT law, I draw you to section 65. During your free time, you would open this section and you check penalties, various penalties. The first penalty I want you to get interested in is when you fail to register. Failing to register, the penalty which is liable is double the tax, double the tax due during the period. The tax due during the period in which the duty to apply for registration from the date, from the last date of the period in which the duty to apply for registration arose. So the penalty there is double the tax. If you not able to keep proper records, yeah, same thing. You are going to pay double the tax assessed. If you fail to lodge a tax return on a periodic basis monthly, the penalty is in two ways. Failing to lodge a tax return, you are either going to pay 200,000 shillings or the interest rate on the tax, the interest charge on the tax uh, payable during the period. Failure to lodge your return, we are saying you compare the two and you take the higher, the higher or greater of 200,000 or the interest on the tax which is due the period. The interest penalty is 2%. That is under Schedule 5 of the income tax Act. Now, that's a brief background on input, output, registration. So, what is all this information all about? When we talk of input, output, what's the relationship between input and output? Output VAT is, we, as we say, is the VAT which is charged on taxable supplies. I mean, in simple language, it is the tax charged on sales and the rate is 18%. So at the end of the day, 
the tax agent or you, the CPA student, at, at your level, you can do it. The VAT which is now going to be remitted to the tax authority will be the output VAT, output VAT minus input VAT, output VAT minus input VAT. This gives us the VAT to URA. <coughs> okay. Now, this input VAT is not all creditable. Section 28 of the VAT Act highlights the categories of input VAT which is not admitted as credit in the tax return. What are those? We are saying, here we are saying section 28 lists the categories of uh, supplies or transactions which will not qualify for uh, credit in the tax return. And the first one is a supply of automobiles. A supply of auto mobiles including it is repairs spare parts all that unless the person is in the business of making taxable supplies in, of automobiles in the ordinary course of business two entertainment entertainment is not will not be allowed as credit unless the person is in the business of providing entertainment in the ordinary course of business. Even meals and refreshments to employees, or when an employer offers meals and refreshments to employees for the benefit of the business, still they will not be admitted as credit in the tax return. Three, telephone services, telephone services to the tune of 10%, the tune of 10% of the total input tax on telephone services, input VAT on telephone services will not be admitted. Well, having said that, as a highlight on input credit, which qualifies for uh, credit in the return and the one which does not qualify, I want to come and talk about something like mixed supplies. You may have never heard about it. Mixed supplies. Now, colleagues, please do not mix the term mixed supplies with a combination of taxable supplies and exempt supplies. That one is catered for separate. Mixed supplies, you are looking at a supply of goods as well as services. So what does the, the, the Act, the VAT Act, tell us about mixed supplies? This is what the Act tells us. That a supply of goods, a supply of goods, incidental, incidental to the supply of services, is part of the supply of services, incidental to the supply of services, is part of the supply of services. A supply of goods is related to the supply of services is part of the supply of services. This is option one. Option two, if you have a supply of services is related to the supply of goods is part of the supply of goods. Option three, if you have an import of goods is to if you have an import of services incidental to the import of goods is part of the import 
goes. Now, going back to the other part, I told you earlier about com combination of taxable and exempt. The exempt supplies or the exempt items are listed in the second schedule of the VAT Act. Colleagues, I want to draw you to the, to the schedules of the VAT Act, which make uh, the cornerstone of this paper or the subject matter at hand today. You will be aware, or when you, when you check, you will, you will confirm that Schedule 1 lists the exempt organizations. Institutions which are exempt from VAT. Exempt institutions. Schedule 2 lists exempt supplies. Schedule 3 lists uh, zero rated supplies. Schedule 4 is now formally. So, you go and read through the schedules. I cannot go through now because there are so many items. What I also want you to be aware of is the subsequent amendments. For you to learn today, all taxable supplies, all supplies which are zero rated are taxable supplies. So whenever you hear taxable supply, it implies that that supply is either standard rated or zero rated. Now, what happens if a supply is standard rated? If a supply is standard rated, the rate, the standard rate is 18%. Okay? If a supply is zero rated, the rate is 0%. One will ask, what is the benefit of 0% then? Why not part of zero rated supplies being combined with the exempt supplies? This is the uh, importance attached there. When a supply is zero rated, the person will not be able to pay tax in the form of VAT to URL, but yet will be able to benefit if there are any taxable inputs charged. If the person is charged VAT, that person will be able to have input credit, input VAT credit. So to say, if a person, for example, have deals in both tax uh, zero rated and exempt supplies, that person will be able to benefit from the, the zero rated supplies. The supplies, the supplies which he has been charged zero VAT, but is able to claim he has been charged 18% VAT, but is able to claim that VAT from URI immediately in his return. So, uh, I want also to draw you to a small format here when they ask you about calculate the VAT payable to the tax authority. The question will come when you have several items, maybe a business made, blah, 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 during the month of February. So what are you going to look at as you read the story? You are going to look at items which are not in the exempt schedule and items which are not in the zero rated schedule. If the, you have items which are not falling in any of the two schedules, then the item is automatically standard rated. And for that matter, we will charge the VAT. Pay attention to the language used in the question. Is the examiner saying the sugar is inclusive or VAT or exclusive? Mark these two words. Inclusive or exclusive? Inclusive or exclusive? Inclusive or exclusive? 
Whenever they, if we are dealing with tax sale, these are sales, tax sale supplies, or sales. In the case they are inclusive, you are going to apply 18 out of 18 plus 100. This will be your rate. If they are exclusive, you are simply going to apply 18 percent. Now, hoping we are together here, the question we may also have items which are exempt and those which are zero rated and those which are standard rated. We said from the beginning that the VAT which is going to be paid will be the output VAT minus the input. For you to obtain the output VAT, you are going to obtain either you are using this or this, depending on the question, the language used in the question. And I also informed you about input VAT and the categories of the items of the supplies which do not qualify for credit. So, mark this formula. Now, I want to introduce another formula to you. In the case a taxpayer, taxpayer is dealing, taxpayer deals in variety of supplies, variety of supplies. That is, uh, it has zero rated supplies, maybe, comma, exempt, comma, standard. Those, those are the categories of the tax, the supplies the taxpayer may be dealing in. For this matter, not all the input VAT is claimed. Therefore, I want, I wish to draw you to the formula under the formula schedule for computing the input credit, and that is A times B over C. Now B is the input you will be having, the input VAT. B these are the taxable supplies. Taxable supplies. When I talk of taxable supplies, I mean both zero rated and standard rated. Then C is the total. Total sales. Total supplies. So when I say total supplies, I am meaning zero rated, standard rated. And exempt, but exclude excluding the one on imported services. Supply of VAT on imported sub services, according to the amendment of twenty um, uh, recent amendment, VAT on imported services is included in the tax return and paid. So, in this formula, if you had it, you would exclude it. But mark this. Primarily, total supplies on this formula, the denominator, we are talking about zero rated supplies plus standard rated supplies plus exempt supplies. And what is in the num on the numerator are taxable supplies. That is only zero rated and standard rated. Now, this is a standard apportionment, apportionment formula for input VAT. Now, you may find that there is a taxpayer who will be disadvantaged by this formula. Check an example when the taxpayer has a lot of exempt supply. Just know, if there is a taxpayer who is disadvantaged by the formula demonstrated here, then the taxpayer can apply to the Commissioner General to use 
what we call standard alternative method. Some people like to say SAM, S A M. Standard alternative method. In this case, the taxpayer will be permitted to attribute the input VAT to the taxable surplus. The VAT, the input VAT, which can be attributed to a given taxable supply, will be claimed full. The one which is attributed to exempt supply will be left out. And at the end of the day, if there is one which cannot be attributed to either the taxable or the exempt, then it will be apportioned. Good. Coming back to this formula, when you insert this formula, the answer you get determines your next course of action. So, if you are formula A over B, sorry, 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 if your formula A times B over C gives you 5%, what does this mean? If what I mean, if A times B over C, for instance, is less, let's say it gives you less than 5%, then do not claim that input credit is not admitted. If A times B over C is greater than 95%, claim everything, claim all the input tax. If it is in between, then you are portion. Take that portion of the input VAT in your return as the credit. So, this is the standard apportionment method I explained earlier here. Now, the standard alternative method, the sum I had mentioned also lately, for it, before you come to this stage of apportioning, you attribute. What does the mean? What is the meaning of attributing? Attributing, you are looking at your sales in the math. Those ones which are standard rated, or those ones which are taxable, because we know that taxable can either be zero rated or standard rated. So the taxable supplies you have in the math, you match them with the input. The input VAT on taxable supplies. So the expenses you have incurred on these supplies, the expenses you have incurred on the taxable supplies, you are going to claim this VAT in full. So if you have also exempt, exempt supplies, exempt supplies, the expenses you have incurred, or the, 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 the costs in, which are directly attributed to these ex exempt supplies, any input VAT will not be admitted. This one will not be credited as input, uh, an input VAT allowance. So, you may remain with some transactions which you cannot directly attribute either to taxable supplies or to exempt supplies. So to say the transactions which are applying to both. So for that matter, you are going to apportion. That method applies to a disadvantaged taxpayer. Now, what I also want you to recall is that uh, your examiner also refers to include in your set of questions, testing you about the meaning of certain words, like tax invoice. Okay? Debit note. Credit note. So 
uh, I'm going to give you this as an assignment. So when I come next time, you tell me what you have researched about, what's a tax invoice, uh, characteristics of a valid tax invoice, what's a debit note, credit note, in our next session. I will also come along with some past paper questions which we shall practice together to build on the knowledge we have learned today. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, I hope to meet you next weekend. Thank you.